Right, well, uh, I caught these two. This is a lesser spotted dogfish. Uh, minimum keeping size is uh, 15 inches or 38 centimetres, something like that. 15 inches is 38 centimetres. Now, that one, I wouldn't really have kept that, to be honest, but it bled out. I don't know why, just bled massively bled out from its uh, from its gills I think you can maybe see it start to bleed out on the, the video where I caught it now normally I would leave the, the head on these because you need the head you normally you would pick up a piece up of skin off off of here a pair of mole grips and hold on to the head and use the head as, as leverage. Uh, so I'm going to fill at these instead. There's only a single bone runs all the way through there. I'm going to fill at them, and I'm thinking that I might make some. I will call them dogfish scampi because that's what I sort of presume they're going to taste like. The missus wants me to batter them, so I might very well have to batter them. But either way, I'm sure it's going to be tasty. It's got some lovely firm flesh. But maybe I'll do some breaded ones and some battered ones. And um, yeah, I'll come back to you when I'm when I when I've sharpened my knife. Would you believe all of my decent filleting, sharp filleting knives are uh, in my tackle boxes or in a shed? So I'm uh, struggling at the minute, but I'm sure we'll be alright. So I'm going to take this centre bone, follow that down. This is blunt as, oh it's dangerous. Again, across this side. <laughs> Lesson people always sharpen your knives. Right, giving it some proper sharpening. So, follow down. Oh, that's better. You can literally get this bone. Out of the centre. Pretty much like this. And then you can literally, if we take it a bit further down here. Work either side of the bone. There's some bits of gristle up by where anywhere there's where there's a fin, you're gonna have a piece of gristle. Um, and then just continue to follow. I don't know if you can see anything. Continue to follow that bone down. So, be close there. That is it. That is all there is in there. And for the little one, that's a nice piece of meat. All right, I'm going to split it down the middle. Crunchy skin. Was that sharp enough? It was. 
now we will attempt to I don't think this is gonna skin I'm gonna take mm, the, I'm gonna take the wings off take off those little wings the thing is I want to eat as much of this fish you know I killed this fish I want to eat as much of it as possible So, try and get underneath this knife in front again already. Just one pass through that skin and it's, it's blunt. So, try and get a start here. And then with a really sharp knife, you can take the fillet off, but we don't have a sharp knife. For a fillet knife, if this was a flat, soft fillet knife, I'm just going to go for it. Left a bit of <coughs> meat on there, and I'll just miss that piece of skin. We'll recover as much as we can. <coughs> now, if I had to skin that properly with a head on, some more grips, you know, I'll get. All of that meat. Bear in mind, this was uh, the minimum size. It just touched 15, 15 inches. So, you know, if you consider that a scampi, what we're we looking at? Chop, 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 chop. Eight scampi. Shouldn't be calling them scampi, but we will. Because scampi is expensive. And we like to recreate expensive stuff. Right, there's this. Right, that's uh, finally done. Um, I recovered. I'm happy with the amount of meat I've recovered. I don't see anything going to waste there. As I say, I would have much preferred to have just skinned them um, with the head on, but reasonable amount of, uh, if you can see it, nice fleshy looking meat there. We're going to chop these up into probably bite sized chunks like that. A bit smaller than that. I think we'll get a fair, fair few out of there. The misses, I've got the misses here, and I've got a seven, seven year old boy. I've got a, two teenage kids, but they're not here for dinner today. So I think we should just knock up some dogfish scampi and get some potatoes on and fry up some chips to go with it. Yeah, we'll do that.
Don't want them too thick, do we? Wrist is holding up pretty well. In fact, the more I do, the better it's getting. Is it? Yep. Yeah. Ow, just cracked. Right, chips, par boiling in oil. Uh, let's turn that down a second. What have we got? What have we got? What have we got? We've got uh, a bit of plain flour, some egg, not many breadcrumbs, so we have also got, ouch, some batter. Uh, Excuse the state of the oven, it's it's not dirty, it's just stained from years of my views in it. But it's a good oven, especially this ring here, it's a hefty, hefty wok burner ring. So, um, yeah, it does me fine. Keep an eye on this, because when that gets hot, there's a potential that that could just burst into flames. As I'm sure some of you well know. But parboiling them in oil. Time's getting on. People are getting itchy for dinner as well, so. Uh, I'll come back to you soon. Right, chips are done. This uh, bought myself a new T fail wok because it was reduced to something silly like six and a half quid in Tesco's half price or something like that. And um, although it's like one of those thermal spot ones, it's got a big chunky metal ring on the bottom, it doesn't come up to temperature very quickly. I'm trying to cook these chips on about 150 degrees centigrade, so it's taking a little while. But my fish should be fine. So we'll be getting that in next. Uh, that's about all we're having with this. Fresh fish and fresh potatoes. Oh, and some peas. Better put some green stuff with it, apparently. Not for me, but for the rest of them. Right, let's get his chips in the oven, keep them warm. <coughs> Hot. Wipe the oil up. No idea what you can see. This is a must for any battery. Uh, cocktail stick. I'm actually going to uh, fry up a couple of bits of the white as well while I'm at it, as well. So we'll, we'll just do a test of one of these first. A bit of flour. 
behind me can smell some food. It's got a food plant or something. Uh, we'll just dump that in. See what happens. I reckon three minutes a piece of the We want our fish. To be 63 degrees centigrade at its cooked point. Come on, you silly fine man. <coughs> uh, you know, two minutes probably, three minutes are probably the over the top. And it's looking alright. Fizzing away. I'm just going to do this one first because then I'll know, I know where we're at and uh, it just makes life easier when you come to doing the full batch. So um, this is one of these as well, if you can see it, I don't know if you can see it, digital thermometer, very handy. Could cook things to perfection with these. You don't need to worry about poisoning people. Oh, it's popping. Right. Stick that in the middle of there. And at the moment we are at 70, we're going over 90, yeah, over 100 degrees. Over 100 degrees centigrade. So, turn it down a bit. Open. Oh, it's hot, 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 hot. It's very moist. Hmm. Tasty. So, they're two minutes. Two minutes. Ha, 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 ha. Right, so I'll crack on, try the rest. You don't want it to. They get too hot. Right. Well, uh, here it is. I had to put me peas in a separate bowl. Got to have me peas, and I. Um, There it is. Unfortunately, the breadcrumb cooked a bit quicker than I expected. Got some white in there, and these are me battered bits of dogfish. I don't know if you can see me. A bit of lemon on there, I reckon. <laughs> Move me chips. Chips of uh, always love some real chips. Himalayan pink sea salt. 
sea salt actually it's not sea salt is it himalayan himalayan pink salt had to come from the sea at one point of course it did oh it's not i'm not covering this in salt it hardly comes out lemon water. Wilson, be quiet, please. Don't know what went wrong with this butter. I said to the missus, can you make some butter? Can you make some butter? But she did say from what? And I said, flour and water. Tomato sauce. I do love my tomato sauce. I don't eat like this all the time. Mm. I like to watch channels like um, Beard vs. Food. Love him. I think he's great. Gets me very hungry. One thing is weird. One thing I don't mind watching people eating and enjoying good food ignore the batter but the fish is flaky flaky <laughs> spongy batter egg i put egg in it I coated these ones in egg first i'm actually a very experienced chef The breaded ones are good. I think next time, definitely, we'll get some decent breadcrumbs. On. I add that much left in the tub. The chap from Essex Shore Fishing, I think it was that one. Just chuck some breadcrumbs, made his own panko style breadcrumbs. I just tried it. I need to. Sorry. Need to leave it in the oven for longer because um, basically what I made was um, toast. Um, and as you know, grating toast which doesn't seem to work. Just had a sudden strange feeling of uh, appreciation of where this food this food came from. Obviously, all food comes from the same place, but unless you're vegetarian, but then be grateful to your vegetables because they spend a lot of time growing and doing what they do before they're harvested and eaten. So in my eyes, there's not a great deal of difference between the two. That's not really my opinion, but just ignore that. Um, but this fish, in my old age, you know, it's the taking of a life. I've had so many pets. You know, I've got fish in the garden in the pond. Uh, I have had fish in the garden in the pond. Then it's broke my heart. You know, when I've not broken my heart, but I've been really quite annoyed that they've died. What more waffle on all about? This is good. Now, if that doesn't look like scampi, <laughs> looks nothing like a scampi, but it certainly tastes like it. <clears throat> I've been struggling to put a 
weight on since since I was diagnosed with the rheumatoid arthritis about two years ago. Felt like I had some major food intolerances and if you suffer from any form of autoimmune condition you'll know that there's a lot of us that believe that food plays a big part and I was allergic to everything at one point gluten and vegetables <coughs> who's that? well at least that's what it's in but you know I went on a journey of self healing everyone's put me on uh, the usual medication methotrexate pump steroids into me to uh, stop the inflammation and I just didn't feel it was necessary yeah I was quite seriously ill but you know when I, I stopped eating gluten for three or four days and uh, my body you know all the inflammation went away and then all of a sudden I'm allergic to dairy products and I have something chocolate or whatever it was anything put anything in your stomach and it you know causing causing an autoimmune response when my body starts attacking my joints and my tendons eight months eight months I've been in remission other than a bit of the like I say the RSI but this is not rheumatoid arthritis and a, a rheumatoid arthritis flare, a proper flare, you feel it, feel it everywhere, systemically, your entire body, it's almost like somebody's switched on your inflammation trigger, but um, I went on a carnivore diet for, I gave up, in, I kept looking for these, uh, you know, food intolerances, taking this out, taking that out, AOP diet, this diet, that diet, in the end, I just went, sorry, I'm just going to eat meat, nothing but meat. Well, that was really tasty, uh, really fun making the video. Um, I've not even edited as yet, and uh, you know, I'm going to just try and knock something together pretty simply on uh, a free movie maker. I'm going to add a bit of enthusiasm back to life. Spent a long time unable to do much well, a long time felt like it was two years uh, felt like a long time so well I hope you liked the video um, you know I hope to be able to do some more I'm planning to do some winter fishing at least so uh, I will record if anyone's interested in watching please do if anyone's interested in commenting please do um, you know, we'll, we'll sort of uh, see where we go from there. Again, I'd like to say a big thanks to all the other YouTubers that have helped helped me get to this point of uh, deciding to just get up and move, really. <laughs> Some of these fishing programs I've been watching, it's been pure jealousy. Uh, I've been uh, laid up, swollen up unable to move and some some of you have actually given me the fight to, to get to get back up and get back moving and I think and I do honestly think that sometimes we give up too too easily and too quickly and uh, we can we can just lay down and when we lay down ultimately potentially that's the end so uh, best to keep moving for as long as you can and not only that you know being out there doing this sort of stuff is, is, is giving me motivation it's giving me exercise uh, even the editing of the videos no doubt I'm going to enjoy doing 
it would be good to have some some subscribers and some followers. I'm 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 changing from an old channel that I had had one video on there from an old Renault began uh, repair a bodge job repair for a Renault began, but it seemed like it was a really really big problem at the time, and that's been on there for, I think probably eight years maybe maybe a bit longer. But it's actually got eighty thousand odd uh, views on it. I'm very proud of that video. Um, but I think I'm going to have to start a new channel completely just uh, to move away from that. So it'll be hard. It'll be hard to get rid of my my very basic video that's that got me 80,000 views. And still climbing today for some peculiar reason. I had 500 views in, in a period of about 10 days um, for something for a Renault, Renault Megane brake servo problem. But there you go. Um... Uh, hopefully I'll just think of various different videos to chuck together and um, hopefully it'll be just as entertaining for you as it, as it will for me don't forget to subscribe <laughs> don't forget to subscribe <laughs>